Yeah. We're live. <laughs> so first and foremost, right? We are live. We, so we're officially live. It is twelve twenty on Wednesday. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Cheers, everybody. We're actually live from the Aesthetics Clinic in Beaconsfield on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Uh, on behalf of my entire team and Jonathan, I would like to uh, wish you all a fabulous day. And we're here to have a very exciting and innovative first ever physical event live at the clinic. So I'm so honored and so excited to welcome right here at Aesthetics in Beaconsfield and just the United Kingdom as a whole. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. <laughs> the no pressure. The creators, the founders, the CEO and the inventor of our very latest light therapy that we introduced to Aesthetics a year and a half ago. So a big welcome to Mr. Patrick Johnson, the creator, inventor, and founder of our Saluma Light Therapy. A big welcome to you, Patrick. Yes, lovely to have you here. It's wonderful to be here. And I'd also like to say a very warm welcome to Denise Ryan, who is brand manager, vice president of, of Saluma, and all the way from California. All the way from California. All the way from California. Yes. You get in a Thank plane, you. 10 hours later, you're here. And you're here. <laughs> so we didn't bring the weather, but you just <laughs> <did>. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the sunshine? Yeah, sorry. The weather will come, for yeah. sure. So big welcome to you both, Ka uh, Patrick and Denise. We're so excited to have you here. And also, I have to say a very, very warm welcome to all of our amazing patients for taking the time to come out and spend some time with us on our first physical event. It's great to see so many faces and names that we recognize, that we see so often here at the clinic, friends of ours as well. And so we'd just like to extend on behalf of my team a very warm welcome to each and every one of you here today. And to my team, thank you for the amazing setup. <laughs> <laughs> so, Beck so Beckinsville, you're in for a treat because we're gonna be talking to Patrick and Denise uh, all about low level light therapy, all about LED and demystifying what our Saluma device truly does. And what has been very unique and special about this entire journey for me, Patrick, and to us uh, treating our patients and to achieving results is the science. Mm -hmm. We always are drawn to the science. Without science, we can't get a deeper understanding of um, tissues and what we can do to create comfort and to create results and to also deliver a great experience all at the same time. You know, we don't want to have downtime. We don't want to have a bad experience in order to get results. We want to try and enjoy these processes, don't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. And what really has drawn me to light as a whole is the fact that the journey of understanding light has been one that has been very enlightening. I think we don't understand the potentials of a lot of things that we bring into our homes and in our practices. So today is all about demystifying what this therapy can really do. So. I really look forward to you taking our patients on that journey. Okay, great. Lovely. So can you please share with us, Patrick, just a little bit about you and your company and Denise first and foremost? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we founded Biophotos 11 years ago. And um, prior to that, I was a, an executive officer in a publicly traded company in the orthopedics industry of the, of the medical device industry. And um, I was on a long walk on a beach in Hawaii reflecting on my uh, pending 50th birthday and and sort of decided that what I was doing despite being successful at it um, wasn't what I wanted as my professional legacy. I wanted to make a, a, a bigger contribution to the wellness of the world and, and one that was non-invasive and non-toxic which is the exact opposite of orthopedics. And so um, I came home and I quit my job which I wouldn't recommend at the height of a great recession in retrospect. Um, but it, it uh, allowed me the time to really take a look and find a nugget around which to build a company. And um, I literally stumbled on the clinical literature on low level light therapy, which is um, light energy devices that admit less than a watt of power. And, and came to it very skeptically. Um, I, you know, someone were to tell me that you could heal the body with just light energy, it was like, no, that can't be right. You have to mm -hmm. cut and stitch and yes. pull and peel. And, and um, so I spent three months 
looking into at that time the more than 3,000 papers on low level light energy and, and, was, and was struck by the science, both the depth and breadth of the science, mm -hmm. as well as the, the really prestigious institutions the, the, the research was emitting from. And so it, it looked like an opportunity to, to build a company around. And so, and, and to build a company that could provide the therapeutic benefits of light therapy to the masses. Because at that point, um, the products that were actually practicing the science were very expensive, twenty-five to $50,000. And so that left a lot of people without access to the benefit of that yeah. technology. And so we really set off on, you know, trying to develop a device that was, you know, Effective, safe, and and affordable, mm -hmm. and um, and it's and it's turned out okay. It's, <laughs> it, it turns it turns out it was it was a it was a, a worthy cause to take on. So, and what um, were those machines being used for when you discovered them? Well, you know the 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 predecessors to low level light ther therapy were photodynamic therapy, yeah. which was used in aesthetics for triggering topically applied products. So products that are photosensitive and where you trigger a chemical reaction with light energy. Um, those companies initially entered the low level light therapy world um, and brought that product paradigm into um, low level light therapy. But it was a very expensive paradigm yeah. because when you're trying to trigger um, photosensitive materials, you, you need a lot of energy and yeah. you need very precise wavelengths of light. And that n isn't necessarily a good thing in low level light therapy like, like the Saluma. Um, probably the best way to understand it is, is low level light therapy is the equivalent of photosynthesis for, for mammals. <laughs> and I say mammals because um, it turns out animals love light therapy as much as humans do. Mm -hmm. And they and do. and if you have one at home, you know, you, you will have to fight your cat for your saluma. Yes. Or dogs. Can, or dogs. Or dogs. Confirm that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, we we are um reestablishing um normal cellular function by delivering therapeutic wavelengths of light that you get when you walk out in the sun, um, if the sun's out. Um, but we've isolated out the bad wavelengths and focused on the therapeutic wavelengths. So we're, we're using light energy to um, trigger biochemical reactions inside of the body that reestablishes normal uh, cellular functions, specifically the mitochondrial process. Um, in all of our cells, there's, a, there's an organelle called the mitochondria. And, you can think of it as the, the cellular powerhouses. Yeah. It's where cellular energy is produced through synthesizing oxygen and glucose. And that process breaks down um, over time. Arguably, the definition of aging is the degradation of the mitochondria process. So yeah. we're using light energy, non-invasively, non-toxically, to turn back on normal cellular function and get your body back to healing the way it was designed. Mm. And that's, that's pretty much all we're doing. Well, that, that's a lot in itself, <laughs> actually. It's complicated. Like, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's simple, but complicated. Yes, yeah. and, and, and I'll get to that point. There's so many things I want to ask you yeah. already, but let's get to that point, because I always say to patients, aging is a loss of energy. You know, we're mm -hmm. all tired, or some of us mm -hmm. more than others, mm -hmm. you know, but we all get tired, and we don't mean just sleepy tired. Uh, we are naturally actually depleting. So we mm. understand from aesthetics and skin that we're losing 1% of collagen, 1% elastin, 1% hyaluronic acid, these kind of proteins and sugars in the skin. So we almost understand that really well now because we're becoming more educated in skin science. We also know that we're going to get shorter as we age. So there's an element of bony decay, 1%. We also know that we're going to be changing muscle tone, sarcopenia, 1%. So then we think of these organelles, these powerhouses, these battery centers, which are these mitochondria, and they're also losing their powerhouse mm -hmm. function. So I'm sure they're probably going down 1% every year, sometimes oh, accelerated. Yeah. So there's accelerated causes, stress, sun, excessive, sugar, you know, all of those kind of things. And I'm sure the 
the pandemic in its own right has probably turbocharged the deceleration of all of us as a unit anyway. So that's a really interesting point because that's what really made it, again, so unique for me to bring this in, yeah, and that and specific point. Yeah, and the, the, the clinical literature that's most relevant to this conversation actually came out of uh, NASA and the Marshall Deep Space Exploration Studies. Um, you know, there's a lot of challenges sending the human body into a zero gravity environment for two and a half years, which is what you have to do if you want to go to Mars. <laughs> and um, what NASA discovered, which kind of makes sense, is as you know, biological organisms that evolved on the face of the Earth, our bodies at a cellular level rely on Earth's gravity. When you, when you take the body out of Earth's gravity, cellular function um, doesn't. <laughs> Um, and so NASA recognized that, and, and what happens is the body enters a state of hyper aging. So all of the things you just described, bone entropy, muscle entropy, suboptimal performance of the respiratory system, suboptimal mm -hmm. performance of the vascular system, yeah. that, that happens to astronauts at a, at a very high rate. Mm. And so it was actually NASA who developed the high intensity LED technology to counter the effects yeah. of zero gravity environment on, on astronauts, which then has a whole bunch of implications back here because we all, uh, as the result of all kinds of environmental insults, um, you know, disease, illness, injury, bad behavioral habits, mm. you know, or, or just, the, you know, just the, the normal wearing out over time, we, could, we can benefit from that technology. So that's really what's what's uh, brought light therapy to us. And then in aesthetics, as you mentioned, um, fibroblast cells are responsible for the production of collagen and elastin, which are the two most important proteins in connective tissue as well as skin health. And so when we all reach the age of about 40, our fibroblast cells sort of say, I'm going into retirement, uh, that's enough and they stop producing that collagen and elastin and as a, as a result, we get fine lines and wrinkles in our skin. Um, injuries don't heal as quickly. You know, mm -hmm. when we're 17 and we roll an ankle, the coach tells us to run it off. You know, when we're 57 and we roll an ankle, we call the orthopedic surgeon. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, because our bodies just don't can't, heal. They, they, they don't heal. Mm -hmm. And so that's really the, you know, the, the, main benefit of low level light therapy is mm. just getting the body back to its you know earlier younger ability to heal itself Correct. you know and providing it the energy energy to do that mm. i'm not sure if that was an answer to a question was, uh, <laughs> did everyone get it yeah. yes yeah. 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 as long as everybody gets it then i think yeah. we're good yeah. <laughs> okay it's good your, it's your mission to to make everyone aware of this because obviously you know um, a lot of people know about it but right. now it's, you know, it, it, well, from what you've said, this is life-changing. It yeah, it's, it's, uh, fundamentally it was getting the world back to normal aging. Well, then, it, then everybody benefits from it. And it's, and, it's, and it's not an expensive technology, and it's not um, a complicated technology. You know, all, the Saluma is a, a class two medical device, so it's highly regulated, regulated yes. around the world. But it's also, you know, has regulatory credentials that allows us to, to be used by non-clinically trained individuals. So you can all have it at home, you know, whether it's for improving, you know, aesthetic appearance or for managing aches and pains or for, you know, treating acne in, in, in teenagers or hair restoration. Um, you know, 40% of women over the age of 40, you know, have hair loss. And, and you know that's a function of the normal aging process and hormonal changes and it turns out that we can reverse that process with light therapy. So you know, there probably is not many people who couldn't benefit by having access mm -hmm. to it. And, and for me, sort of you know, bringing the conversation full circle, you know, having a legacy where I've impacted you know, millions or hundreds of millions of people, mm -hmm by giving them access to a yeah. to a wellness technology 
um, that doesn't require them checking in the hospital, you know, that, that'll be a good one for me. Fantastic. Yeah. And I think if, if I'm not jumping the gun, um, can you explain what the different light colors do and, and how they're set? Great themselves? Yeah, good question. Great question. So, <laughs> so wavelength uh, of light energy occurs to us as different colors. And so, you know, if you look at the, the light spectrum, we sort of go from, from blue. As we come out of ultraviolet light, um, you, you go from blue to greens to yellows to reds to near infrared, which is no longer visible to the human eye, but animals can see it and your iPhone can see it. Um, the wavelength determines the depth of penetration of the light energy. So depending upon the condition we're treating, we will use shorter or longer wavelengths of light. So for instance, blue light is a very short wavelength of light. And so we use it predominantly to treat conditions at the surface of the skin, like acne or eczema or psoriasis. Um, red light is a longer wavelength. It will penetrate between two and eight millimeters below the surface of the skin. So that's down where all the uh, fibroblast cells live. And so that's why there's a there's an association between red light and anti-aging. That's right. Because yeah. we're activating the fibroblast cells and, and getting them back to work. So that's the collagen layer. That's the, yes. that's the anti-wrinkle layer. Oh, yes. That's the one I've got it on. That's, yes. the, one we all, <laughs> that's the one we all have it yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Well, and interestingly enough, um, it's it's also the, the dermal wound healing yeah. light. Uh, light. Um, you know, when, when we have a, a, a dermal injury, whether it's intentional or uh, accidental or disease-based, what we want to do is supercharge the fibroblast cells so they produce the collagen and elastin so we get a normal knitting mm. of, the, of the, the dermal layer. But at the same time, we want to prohibit the production of myofibroblast cells, which are responsible for creating scar tissue. Yes. So, you know, light therapy is a great way not only to accelerate the closure of wounds, but also to minimize the scarring that would otherwise be created yeah. by those wounds. So that, that takes us to the point, actually. You've, you've mentioned this really well, and Adriana at the back is going to ask you a question about microneedling where you're creating yeah. wounds yeah. in a good way. So we know that derma rolling and microneedling and, you know, these kind of collagen induction therapies are creating wounds. Is that producing harmful inflammation, or is it good inflammation? Adrian, you had a point for yeah, Patrick. I wanted to ask, um, how does Zuma work after microneedling, and what are the benefits? So this is yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, so the, it, it, it's a great case study. Um, um, inflammation is the body's natural pr uh, protection mechanism against further injury. Mm -hmm. When the body is injured, it triggers inflammatory processes, which can result in things like swelling. So when you twist your ankle, it swells up, so you'll stop work walking on it, and it can't be further injured. The problem is, is that inflammatory process also retards cellular healing. So in aesthetics, to a great degree, we insult tissue in order to trigger a healing response on the part of the body, but we also trigger inflammation, which retards cellular healing. So we're, wor we're working at cross purposes. Yeah. And so, you know, following any kind of uh, injury to the skin, like microneedling, um, where we're, we're creating one vias in the skin to push product deeper into the tissue, yes. but two, we're also asking the body to heal. Mm. Um, what we want to do is we want to first address the inflammatory process. We need to turn it off. And that's one of the benefits of low-level light therapy because it's, it's vasodilating. So it's going to open up the, the, the microvasculature. It's going to allow for a, a greater exchange of fluids to and away from the injury site. Um, again, it's going to stimulate the fibroblast cells so you get a natural collagen knitting of the injury as it closes. And, and most importantly, there's a, um, Lance Sutterfield is a is sort of the guru of microneedling. He basically says, if you're going to microneedle, immediately follow it with LED. Mm -hmm. And if you're not gonna immediately follow it with LED, with light therapy, don't microneedle. <laughs> because of the risk of creating 
so much inflammation and the potential for scar tissue. Because as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the injury creates the production of myofibroblast cells, which is what creates scar tissue. So we always, anytime we create a dermal injury, whether we're doing it with microneedling or a roller or a laser, Lasers, yes. um, we want to follow that immediately with low level light therapy so that we knock down the inflammatory process mm -hmm. and give the injured tissue the energy it needs to get back to work. Mm -hmm. That was brilliantly described. I mean, I'm, good, so, good I'm so pleased we're all recording this because you could listen to it all over again. Exactly. And, and I think it's so interesting, Patrick, because I'm sponging all of this. Yeah. And we didn't know this in 2007. Yeah. When I heard my first collagen induction therapy lecture, I just thought, wow, how innovative. And off we went with our rollers, <laughs> rolling away. And because that was all we knew. Mm. Uh, we knew that we were creating trauma. Right. We knew we were triggering a natural wound healing pathway in the human being in order to heal and produce better collagen. Mm -hmm. And now we evolve that into the use of lasers. We've got microneedling with radio frequency. Cheryl Marshall Williams does a lot of that. And we want to create this wound healing response. I think what we fail to recognize, but we're understanding much more nowadays in the last few years is we want the good inflammation, but we don't want all the unnecessary harmful inflammation. Yeah, I mean, I, I think to that. a great degree, inflammation has been used as a marker for the healing response on the part of the body. Yes. But it's, it's you know, that's the good part. The yes. bad part is is that it slows cellular healing. Yes. And so we need, we need to address that. Yes. So what we're doing when we're covering, because we've just started doing that now, Cheryl, yes. haven't we? With oh. our intensity, yes. we do 30 minutes afterwards. And it's so much calmer. The patients recover so much quicker yeah. yes. than mm -hmm. having days of redness. They now just leave actually a bit pink, but the next day they're fine. Right. Absolutely fine. And right. So much happier. Yes. And and as you know, aesthetic patients, you know, as much as appearance is important, the the social downtime. Yes. You know, the c recovery time is equally as important. So we don't yeah. want to just create a good re uh, result. We want the the creation of the result to be a good experience, Absolutely. and and the way we do that is is by by treating the injury mm. that's going to result in the good result. Mm. Yeah, because the pa a lot of the patients have had it both ways. Yeah, and they can tell you that they much prefer it. There's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever you did, yes. do that again. Do that again. Yeah. 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 And so uh, basically, it's Luma's good for any treatment you've had. That's, that's causing trauma, whether it be... Yeah, any insulting of the tissue, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can use it in clinic and at home. So I know you have one at home, we use it a lot in clinic at the moment. Interestingly, we've been treating patients post-treatment with Saluma, and aside from the redness going down, in about six to seven minutes into the post-treatment Saluma, they all mentioned that the throbbing suddenly goes mm -hmm. away, Patrick. Mm -hmm. The throbbing goes away, they suddenly become more comfortable. Right. Could you explain how and why that happens? It, it's, again, we're, we're triggering va vasodilation. The throbbing is coming from the con constriction of the, the microvasculature, you know, and that's the swelling, it's the, it's the collection of the, of the fluids at the injury site. And so with the low level light therapy, we are, <laughs> we're, 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 vasodilating the microvasculature and the, the way we do that is we disassociate nitric oxide from the binding centers in cytochrome C oxidase. <laughs> just, like just, just, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Yeah, exactly. um, we're, all, we're all recording you know, this. <laughs> and, and, and so which, which creates more binding locations for the oxygen which then um, releases the nitric oxide into the bloodstream and there is there's Nobel laureate research on nitric oxide, ni not nitrous, ox nitrous oxide, that's the laughing gas, nitric oxide, um, that basically everything that we do that's good for ourselves results in elevated nitric oxide levels in our blood. It's a natural occurring um, chemical in our blood. And so what we're doing is we're telling cytochrome C oxidase, which is the photoacceptor of light energy, to let go of the nitric oxide. That goes into our blood seam. We vasodilate the microvasculature. We're moving fluids to and away, and, and, and the throbbing goes away. Amazing, yes.
Does that make sense, guys? Because sure. I'm sure all of my team are also thinking, why does the pain suddenly go away? Why do our patients suddenly become even more comfortable after mm -hmm. receiving a thousand microneedles <laughs> by our dear Cheryl? So now we know why, you know. Yeah. And, and let's go back to when we first introduced Luma to our practice. So that was 2020 November, mm -hmm. and we brought it in as we were just coming out of the lockdown. It was right. our first welcome back into the practice. And there were a number of things that really drew us to bringing something brand new and innovative into this, uh, into the clinic. One of the first ones was basically us and our patients. And so we were breaking out, well I certainly was, um, coming through a stressful period and wearing masks for 10 to 12 hours a day. So I was developing a lot of cystic acne, becoming very self-conscious. There was a lot of redness and inflammation, wearing that mask for 10 to 12 hours a day as well, normal. And that psychologically makes me not sleep. At night. Right. So you're in a bit of discomfort in your own right. So can we translate that back again to Linda's question, that blue, red, and near infrared, because I wanted the device for me. I yeah, also yeah, wanted yeah. the device to welcome our patients back and turbocharge, because I understood the activation of the mitochondria. And then the third thing was also you had the clear plastic sleeves that your company mm -hmm. brought in post-pandemic mm -hmm. that really made me feel so comfortable that I had a device that my patients could feel um, clean and hygienic coming back into my clinic. Right, yeah. right. And, s I, and what you describe is sort of the, the perfect storm of external and internal events mm. because we're, you know, we're abusing the skin externally because of the mask and we're, you know, we're creating the opportunities for bacteria to take hold and, you know, do their dirty work on the skin. Mm. But you know, in a in a high stress environment like the last two years have been, um, you know, we're we're producing a lot of adrenaline and a lot of cortisol, and our bodies aren't aren't processing it properly, and so you've got a lot of crazy stuff going on inside of the body, and then we're not sleeping, you know, and 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 maybe we're not eating as well as we should, and you know, basic wellness starts with nutrition, and yeah. and so you had all of that stuff going on. And you know, and I and, and I don't I don't want to sort of characterize it as a panacea, but light therapy can address so many of those that. things, including, you know, when you use the saluma over your face, you're going to trigger serotonin production in your brain. Correct. And that's going to help you sleep. Yeah. And if you're sleeping better, then you know, you can deal with things during the day better. Um, whether that's you know how you're taking care of the kids because they can't be in class or how you're take, ha taking care of the parents because you can't see them and they can't see you. I mean, the last two years has been nuts. <laughs> um, and, and I'm going to so wave to a few people, actually. They're, they're waving to you, yeah, Patrick, okay. so I'm going to break Hi, I'm waving back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, so, I mean, that really has, you know... Um, COVID was a great time for us as a company because we found we could help a lot of people. And, um, and, and again, sort of going back to, you know, what did I want as a professional legacy? I, 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 you know, having a positive impact on what was going in COVID, whether that was, you know, people putting the saluma over their chest or over their back yeah. to knock down respiratory inflammation or it was them, you know, being able to have a saluma treatment on their face when they couldn't see someone like Dr. Shrina. I mean, it was it was all good stuff. Can I ask, with the endorphins that are released to make you feel good? Yes. That's a great thing maybe to do in the morning. But Ian, you're saying with the release of serotonin. Yes. What would you advise? Would you say using it in the morning, or actually more beneficial using it before bed? Well, there's benefits to both. And a lot of it has to do with makeup. Oh, okay. Because you want to do light therapy on clean, dry skin. Okay. And so, you know, when, when you're waking up in the morning, um, you know, you can keep your saluma by your bedside table and just sort of drag it up onto your face and snooze for another 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but going to bed, you know, going to bed, you can do the same thing. You can you can put you know put it over your face because you don't have your makeup on, and so that's the optimal for the light energy absorption. It's going to trigger the serotonin. It's going to mm -hmm. relax you. 
Um, the only downside to it is you might discover th you wake up three hours later and you have this thing over your face and it's like, whoa, hi, yes, where I am I? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm the latter. And to be fair, to your point, Laura, I use it at night um, and I've just been so conditioned to using it four to five times a week at night because when I come home from work and I have my shower and I've cleansed my skin, it's a great opportunity for me to just switch off. And it forces me to switch off because my eyes are closed, yeah. I'm relaxed, I'm horizontal, and I'm out in about four to five minutes. I know I am. And I'm getting the benefits therapeutically to reset me, anti-inflammatory me, ma color, uh, sorry, manage my um, inflammation, whatever I picked up during the day. And if I think about the analogy now of the electric car, so if you think of the electric car where you charge it overnight in your home nowadays, which we can do, we don't even need to go out to do that, and then we get into the car and we drive off, and we have a certain amount of mileage before we need to charge it up again. We drive it back home and we recharge it. And I, I think we're just becoming a little bit more like, that's how I look at it now. Yeah, I mean, uh, fundamentally. Can we overcharge ourselves? No, no, you can't. Um, and, and that's the great thing about low level light therapy is the only effect it has is normalizing cellular function in cells that are not functioning normally. Is that a tautology? <laughs> yeah, you, there's no overdose. There's no, no overdose, and it and as uh, Sharina just described, you know, think of it as plugging in your cell phone at the end of the day. Um, you know, while it's going to be plugged in all night, it's it's fully charged in two hours. Yeah. And then you have to deplete some of the energy for it to take more. So nothing's happening. Same thing with, you know, if you were very motivated and you did light therapy you know, in the morning, in the evening, every day, trauma. You know, someone who's yeah. been in a car accident and they have a lot of soft tissue trauma, um, use it as much as you want because you're not going anyplace anyway. Um, but, you know, basically when you do a 30 minute treatment with, with a Saluma, you are going to have up, up to 48 hours of residual upregulated cellular activity. So it's kind of a it's kind of a hours. it's kind of a uh, every other mm. day thing, because um, yes. that's how long it takes also, for the. If you've got old scars, can it help old scars? No. Improve. No. no. Um, what it can do, however, is it can vitalize the tissue around the old scar, which may make the appearance of the scar less. But you know, once you have scar tissue, you have to do something much more invasive. You you have to do a microneedling, yes. deep microneedling, or do laser ablation or something to get rid of that tissue. So for that reason, if you have some sort of dermal injury, you want to get the saluma on it as quickly as possible because you're not only going to help close the wound, you're going to help mitigate the effects of scarring. Brilliant. There we go. So we've got your three wavelengths of light. You've got your blue at the top of the surface. You've got your red, which comes down to the next level, your dermis. More or less. And then we didn't talk about the infrared, did we? And we're talking yeah. about near infrared, which goes all the way through now. Yeah, so, we yeah, so we're talking about wavelengths of light energy from about 400 nanometers to about 900 nanometers. And the reason for that is below 400 nanometers, the, the melanin in our skin prevents the absorption of light energy. That's why we get skin damage. That's down in the ultraviolet range. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, of, uh, above about 900 nanometers, the, the water in our tissue prevents the absorption of light energy, and so we get thermal events. That's right. And so some of you may be familiar with um, infrared lamps or infrared saunas. Yes. Those devices are using far infrared wavelengths, 10 times the wavelengths that we use in the Saluma. And, and you know, warming the tissue is absolutely therapeutic because it's vasodilating, but it's not triggering the biochemical reaction we're after. It's not upregulating ATP. So um, infrared, because it's a long, long, long wavelength, is deep penetrating down as much as 25 millimeters below the surface of the skin, down into the subcutaneous tissue. So we're using it to knock down inflammation. We're using it to knock down muscle spasm. We're using it to increase microcirculation. So it's, it's kind of the aches and pains wavelength, yeah. but because it has such an impact on 
um, the, the microvasculature and helping knock down inflammation. It's, it's near infrared is really good for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, does that make sense, everybody? So it goes all the way down and it's upregulating the mitochondria but moving the circulation around. So take, for example, where we're doing six, eight, 10, 12 hours of Zoom a day, where we're developing tight interscapular muscles, tight intercostals, unused mm -hmm. muscles. Are you saying, Patrick, that if I put the saluma on my skin at my back, it can help by increasing the tissue circulation? A absolutely. Well, and there, there's two things going on there. One, um, muscles fundamentally need calcium to contract and ATP to release. ATP is the chemical that's made in the mitochondria. So if we're stimulating mitochondrial activity, we're providing muscles with um, the ATP they need to release, so that's sort of the first step. And now that the muscle's released, um, we're using the disassociation of nitric oxide to increase uh, vascular activity to get more blood to the muscle. Blood to the tissues. Yeah. yeah. And so, and now you can start working it out. You yeah. know, now you can start moving it again. Yeah. But you know, if we if we abuse our bodies, they're they're going to react accordingly, which is in much in many cases, muscle spasm. Yeah. So it's actually got six FDA clearances for pain. Ten. Ten oh, d six for pain. For pain. Yeah. Six yes. for pain. So that's yes. huge. I mean, that's never been documented yeah, before. Don't address um, arthritis because that was asked before. Arthritis. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the saluma is both FDA cleared and medically CE marked for treating both rheumatoid and um, osteoarthritis. And, and again, that's fundamentally an inflammatory condition. Mm. And so we're knocking down the inflammation in the joints so that they will move, and when you move, oh, you... That's amazing. It's not big enough, I yeah. need it. Okay, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we have one for everywhere. That's, that's, yeah, right here. And then we yeah. have one for yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But, but he doesn't come with it, yes. just <laughs> for clarification. Fine, we'll just take this here. <laughs> but it's interesting because my youngest has just been diagnosed with long COVID and has had right. quite oh. severe backache mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. muscular ache. Oh, and sure. it, it dawned on me about two weeks ago, I had this saluma in the house. And so I used it on his back just before sleep for 30 minutes and it just really soothed him and calmed him. And within two to three days, where it had been lasting for ages, we noticed that he had full movement again. Mm -hmm. yes. And he wasn't saying anything about backache. So I certainly, having seen how it works and considering the fact that long COVID doesn't seem to be um, uncommon, especially in youngsters, and the fact that this is yes. so um, safe to use on any member of the family, I think that this is something that should possibly be looked at because I mean, I've, I've seen it with my, mm. my youngster. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Now, recognize that, that we, we don't make any claims about right. the Saluma yeah. that yeah. aren't medically cr credentialed, mm. but, but from a, a pure science standpoint, mm. you know, it's, it's well documented and several of our um, indication, approved indications for use um, are for treating inflammation, mm, yeah. whether it be inflammatory acne or increasing muscular skeletal microcirculation. Yeah. Mm. Um, but but it makes that that makes absolute sense to me. Yes, likewise. And we've done a lot of reports over yes. the last two years of similar reports with people even claiming that it kept them out of hospital when they couldn't mm. breathe and their breathing was very difficult mm. with COVID. Yeah. And to your point, Zana, I mean, that makes, that makes logical sense, as Patrick was saying, because when th there was a, a fantastic paper that was presented, some studies at an AMWC conference in Monaco over the weekend by a scientist, and he was looking at tissue oxygenation, capillary perfusion of skin and other organelles, and looking at capillary density in someone who was hypoxic. And the capillary density almost went down by as much as 90% in the severely ill. So let's just take your son, for example, who didn't fortunately end up there, but has a degree of hypoxia in his or her tissues, then this is going to help to upregulate, open up the capillary circulation, hopefully again. So that's probably why they experience a betterment in their symptoms yeah. after the session. That's amazing. Thank you for the feedback. So uh, just on that point, Patrick, so I think we've covered the blue, red, near infrared. Does everyone understand that one, the three modes that we have and, and how they can better the patient? I'd love to know more about the positioning because there's a few very solid, unique points 
about this technology compared to the others? And one of the key things is positioning. Do you yeah. mind elaborating? On no, that? not at all. And, and, and this was really the sort of aha moment yeah. for me 11 years ago when, as I was sort of studying the technology. Given my background in orthopedics, um, I was aware post-op in orthopedics that we wrap thermal devices over the surgical site, both, both cold and warm um, thermal devices to manage pain and accelerate healing. And it, it struck me intuitively that light energy would work the same way. If you were trying to treat somebody with light energy, you would want to wrap the device closely around the area of treatment. But at the time, most light energy devices were rigid flat panels that sort of hung over you know, the, the patient or the, the air treatment or area of treatment like a like a chip warmer um, you know it just it, it didn't make sense and so it turns out that my intuition was supported by um, a law of physical optics called the inverse square law and essentially as as light energy travels through space it homogenizes it it, it, it mixes and and to to get a therapeutic benefit, you we have to have that discrete wavelength. And so the closer you can move the light emission to the surface of the skin, the less opportunity there is for that discrete wavelength to diminish yes. and for the body to be able to absorb the light energy. So um, we set off to build a device that would position very very closely to the surface of the skin so we would get optimal energy absorption from that but there's also um, a safety concern because if what you're trying to do is de deliver a therapeutic dose of light energy from a great distance and when I say great, great distance like four inches away from the skin mm -hmm. you have to have a very powerful device Yes. which means two things one is probably much more expensive which sort of came back to our founding mission of making light therapy affordable. But if you move that much energy towards the skin, you actually can damage the tissue. You can, you can overpower the tissue. Sure. Um, you, can, you can activate the melanocytes and create hyperpigmentation. Yeah. Um, and so we don't want to do that. So what we did was we designed the Saluma to deliver light energy right at the surface of the skin that would be both therapeutic and safe and so unlike any other light therapy device on the market you can one flex the saluma but it when you flex it into a particular shape it stays there shape taking yes, yes and so and so that that allows for optimal absorption of the light energy from an efficacy standpoint but then also removes the potential risk of overpowering the tissue with a higher power device that makes sense, doesn't it, everyone? It. Yeah. It's so, so it's just having the right amount of energy to make it accessible mm -hmm. to us, to be able to bring it into our clinics, mm -hmm. right. move it around the whole clinic, use it on anywhere we actually want to, to get the therapeutic benefits, the correct dose. And what we have learned so much is really getting it close to the skin. Mm -hmm. And I, I will put my hand up and say, I was probably a couple of inches off at the beginning and then I watched your video, Denise, your Saluma positioning video, and it taught me so much. And then it's just educating our patients again in clinic and at home to use it the correct way. Yeah. So that's, that that's really key. It really doesn't matter if you actually make contact with the nope. skin. No. no. I was going to say, because my nose is on it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Likewise, that's, Linda. That's exactly where <laughs> yeah. it should be. That was the first thing I asked you about the safety aspect. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's so covered and so amazing. Yeah. That, you know, it gives you so much confidence. And if I lay it on my back, because it gets warm, it sort of feels that it's doing its work as well mm. because it's, you know, generating heat. Yeah, and so actually the, the thing about LEDs is they don't produce heat. That's why they last so long. Um, it's actually the resistors on the circuit board that modulate the power to each LED that gets warm. Right. And oh, so... Nice, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Soon, yeah. So we've got... Don't the bother me with the details. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a good time. <laughs> So we've got the right energy, the dose, so to make it accessible and affordable, which is great. We've also then got the right dose. So the 30 minute dose is... Spot yeah, on. So, so yes, given the amount of energy that's admitted from the device, 
um, a 30 minute treatment will give you that 48 hours of the 48 hours. of upregulated cellular activity. Now, okay. the the as soon as you place the saluma on the body, you're getting a therapeutic benefit. Fabulous. But it's okay. you know it's sort of like going to the gym, you know. Do I go to the gym and work out for five minutes, or do I go to the gym and work out for 30 minutes? You're going to get more benefit from the 30-minute workout. Of course. Same thing applies to the Saluma. Sure. Is there any benefit with myself, if you're saying we're going to get a 48-hour, uh, using it twice a day, as Laura was saying, and I'm just going over that point again. Well, it, it's, it, it really the first filter is, are, are we dealing with a chronic condition, or are we dealing with an acute condition? I think I'm both, actually. Okay. <laughs> if, if it's a condition that... that evolved over time, then it's going to take longer to, to resolve it. it. Yes. And and doing more frequent um, treatment is probably not going to be beneficial. Sure. As opposed to if it's an acute issue, you know, if it's some intentional dermal injury, if it's some sort of muscular skeletal trauma, um, more frequent uh, treatment is is potentially beneficial, and the good thing is it's not going to be harmful. Got it. You know, if the body can't use the light energy, it just won't absorb it. Great, that's very clear. So we have the right energy, we have the right dose in time, we've got the right positioning, so we can literally shape it over the face, the chest, the neck, because we're doing a lot of tech neck treatments. Mm -hmm. We can do a lot of decolletage treatments with that now as well, because this is an area that we often neglect, and I always say the face starts here and it finishes a little bit lower yeah. down than, yeah. our, than our chins. And then the next thing to also think about is um, its shape-taking properties because that makes it very unique to a lot of other devices that I was potentially going to invest in. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to them, they're all fabulous. They're all fabulous. Mm -hmm. But this is what makes it easy for me to bring it around my entire clinic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So can I ask a big question then? Does okay. it make your hair, will it make your hair grow back? Ah. Yes, if, if the follicle is still there, it will rejuvenate the follicle activity. The follicle is still there, but the follicle is still vital. Yes. Yeah. So it can be compromised, yeah. but still vital, not completely dead. So somebody that's completely bald, you can't help them. But, but if your hair is starting to thin... Yes, sure. which happens to everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it will help. And in, and in fact, um, Last summer, we had a new version of the Saluma, the Saluma Restored, FDA cleared for hair restoration. Um, That's the we're mm -hmm. hoping that that device will be um, medically CE marked here um, within the next 30 to 60 days. Um, there's, a, there's a huge paradigm shift going on in the the medical device regulatory world right now in in the United Kingdom and in the EU the the why well, I hesitated there is the UK is still operating under the standards of the EU when it comes to med device regulation but I didn't want to not recognize that you're not in the EU anymore <laughs> <laughs> as painful as that may be for some people um, it's complicated it's making things complicated for us um, but um, so that process is taking a little longer than it normally would because everybody's shifting to this new system. Yes. So the Saluma as we know it now, is, is that suitable for it? No, no, this is a brand new... I knew you were going to ask <laughs> that, Linda. This is I'll a... Try another one now. This is, this is a good point, this is a good point. Well, that'd be okay. Um, no. Um, <laughs> yes. um, yeah, I, it, it, it's a, it's a, again, going back to the science, yes. it's, it's a, uh, it's the still the same wavelength of red light energy that we use, mm. but it's only red light energy. Mm. Um, and um, the intensity of the light energy is different from any other program. And will it look like a cap? Or will no, it, it looks, it looks like our smaller Saluma. Oh, and it and again because it's shape taking, um, you can just kind of roll it up and um, mm -hmm. then stretch it back over the scalp and it stays right there. Wow. But this particular saluma, the saluma restore, yes. can also be used on other parts of the body. Yes, because it also has an anti aging program and it has the uh, aches and pains program. Yes. So it's kind of the the. Will it make hair grow everywhere you put it? <laughs> only where hair is supposed to grow. Oh, right. I mean, and again, that goes that goes back to the only thing that light therapy does is reestablish normal cellular activity. 
So if you weren't, you know, if there's, you know, a place where hair doesn't grow, light therapy doesn't make it grow there. <laughs> it's a great no, 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 it's no, it's a, a great, fair because fair. people worry about that. You know, I'm going to use it over my face and it's going to make the hair grow. No, it doesn't. Because no, those cells aren't there. No. Yes. But it's a really great point because we, we are certainly seeing a lot more, I'm certainly becoming a lot more aware of patients presenting with thinning hair, uh, thinner hair, a lot of hair shredding, you know, a lot of that presenting also at much younger years, 23, 26, we've got a number of patients with that. And so we, we're certainly moving into a lot more hair restoration treatments here at the clinic. And I think what drives me to your, your device in particular also is this constant innovation and looking into the science to see how it can improve new indications for treatment. Yeah, I mean, one of the leading causes of hair loss is stress. And Correct. Mm -hmm. Who hasn't been stressed lately? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, so so it doesn't surprise me that you're not seeing more of that in the clinic. Mm. And a lot of hair loss through COVID as well. Yeah. This is yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So watch this space. You know, it'll be interesting to see where it comes here in the UK. I've got a few other questions, but does anyone have anything in particular whilst I get the questions okay, from the crowd? Um, can I ask about the pulse setting? What the is pulse. the difference between having it pulsing and not? Great question. And that's again another unique feature to the Saluma. Um, what we know from our friends in the laser world is when you pulse the delivery of light energy, it gives the cell a greater opportunity to absorb the light energy. I mean, basically, light energy does three things, four things. Um, it's reflected when it hits a surface. It's absorbed when it hits a surface. It scatters when it hits a surface or it transports, which means it just goes past. And so one of the things that happens is when you deliver light energy in what's called constant wave or continually, um, you have a lot more transportation of the, of the light energy. Whereas if we pulse it, we give the cells little rest periods between, you know, and, and, and we're talking about, you know, milliseconds. Um, but enough that we know that the light energy is absorbed at a higher rate when it's pulsed than when it's not. So that's why the Saluma, all of the programs default to pulse. You can turn the pulse off because some people report that they're sensitive to flashing lights. Yes. Um, the, the pulsation is actually between 80 and 800 times a second. So it's actually not even perceivable to the to the human eye what you you know you sort of see a twinkling like Christmas tree lights but it's actually it's a high-speed pulse um, and so you can turn that off and you get the same amount of energy but it's likely that your cells are not absorbing as much energy great point and so anyone else question on the, when you said there's four different ways the skin absorbs reflects, right right and you also said completely clear skin or would it be helpful when you're talking about the light that may be refracting or reflecting? Would a serum not be good to put it in because it would divert that is, the actual? Yeah, that so is a great question. So, two things. Anything you put on your skin has the potential of reflecting back the light energy and diminishing the dose delivered to the underlying tissue. That's even water based or clear serums. Um, and we've done testing to know that, that the, the, the light absorption can be dramatically reduced by topically applied products. Second, um, there, there are people who will tell you that there's a synergistic benefit between light energy and topical products. And we've not seen any clinical literature that substantiates that and we know in general the molecules in those products are just too big to be pushed through the tissue. That's why we do microneedling, because yes. we create vias in the tissue to push the product through. Um, and, and so, but we, conti we continue to be open to that concept, but so far we haven't found anything in the science that tells us it's actually there. The third thing is, is that if you do your light therapy before you put your products on, theoretically, and I say theoretically because I haven't seen a study, um, the products are gonna be more bioavailable to the tissue mm -hmm. because you've vitalized the tissue. Yeah. So, so our recommendation is always, 
you know, do do your cleansing, do your exfoliations, do your extractions, get the get, get the, the skin clean, dry, and open. Do your light therapy, and then put your products on. That's a great point. So I, I would take to that by saying, clean the glass so the light can go in. Yeah. That's it. And yeah. if you're doing it in the morning, it won't matter that you get night cream on from the night before. Or is it still better to wash your face? It's better to wash, wash your face. Right. Yeah. Wash. And also there's a degree of um, the products from the night before, so they would have worn off and they're not going to absorb any deeper, Linda. And there's also a little bit of oil that might have come across at night, especially in the summer times. Right. So it's good to clean the skin before that light goes through. Right. That actually answers one of the questions that I was sent through during the week. Will the Saluma light improve the serums that I'm using on my skin overnight? So that's a great point, Laura. Anybody else got any questions? I've got a whole list here. Rafia. Can you use all of the three seconds at once for a full 30 minutes? Consecutive. <laughs> yeah, consecutive. Yeah. Consecutive. Oh. No, because what, what we've done is in every program in the Saluma, except the hair restoration program, we're using all three wavelengths of light simultaneously but at different intensity levels based upon the condition, the depth of the condition we're treating. So for instance, in our acne program, we're using blue light dominance because we want to use the blue light to kill the P acne or the C acne bacteria, sorry. Um, but that doesn't do anything for the existing lesions. For the existing lesions, we're delivering red light to knock down the inflammatory process and even a little infrared light to increase the circulation so we're moving fluids to and away. Um, you know, in the absence of the red light and the, and the near infrared, the only thing we're doing is cutting off the source of new breakouts. And so we want to be dealing with, you know, the present as well as the future when treating acne. And it's the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, it's like blending fine wines, you know. <laughs> Yeah. You don't have to. The, the 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 level of dose that we're delivering is is orders of magnitude lower than the light energy safety international light energy safety standards. There's never been a report of an adverse event you, um, with light energy at the levels that we admit um, creating any sort of retinal damage. And so, but, but the fact of the matter is, is some people are just more sensitive to light. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I always try and get someone to use the Saluma without eye protection. Yes. Um, because we want to be treating the eyelids, obviously. Yeah. Um, and if I can get them for, for about 30 seconds just mm -hmm. to be with it, it's, it's usually okay for the rest of the 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, you know, I've probably demonstrated the Saluma tens of thousands of times at trade shows and very rarely can I get someone not comfortable without eye protection. Yeah, so it's really not eye protection, it's eye comfort, mm. yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's for comfort, not safety. Yes, and, and extending to that on a clinical level here in the clinic and at home, we see a lot of patients who are not ready for botulinum toxin injections or muscle relaxant injections. They're not ready for facial injectables and, and they want eye revitalization. A lot of patients are Zooming, they've been at home working 12 hours a day, staring at screens. A lot of patients are coming in with sensitized eyes, puffy and uh, just dull as well. So what we're finding here in the clinic, we carry out a lot of high-tech facials, lymphatic therapy, and what we really want to do is address the health of the tissue and make the tissues respond rather than just filling them or injecting them. And by using the Saluma on its own, after a treatment or at home, you're really seeing the tissue quality of the eye area come to life again. And we know that because we've had patients similar to, to yourselves coming in presenting with inflamed skin, disrupted skin barriers, um, rosacea, I think we showed you that, that before and after. Mm -hmm. And I always was under the thinking of, we need to wait six weeks for each skin cycle, 12 weeks, and you know, I'd normally give them 90 days to get a really nice rehabilitated result. And just with excellent home care, strategic, and a six week wraparound of the Sluma, we're getting some fantastic skin revitalization in six weeks. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that everything that Patrick has taught me, actually I've not only met you twice, um, but <laughs> taught, taught, taught me virtually, um, in the acceleration of the healing 
the upregulation, the activation of our own cells that have been naturally declining with age, we're actually making our patients respond so much faster, which is fabulous. Yeah. Excellent. Anybody else? Just a quick question on the, uh, the sure. warranty if the LED lights don't Great work. Great point. Or, um, yeah, two-year warranty. Two-year warranty. Um, again, we have offices here in Elstree, and they can help with any uh, problems, of which there are very few. I, I think the, the warranty return rate on our 10 years of product in the field is less than a half a percent. Um, the, the product's designed very robustly. There's just basically two things you can't do. You can't put full body weight on it. You can't stand on it or sit on it or lay on it. Um, and then you can't fold or crease it. Yes. You can wrap it as much as you want, but, but folding it has the potential of damaging the circuitry. If you do that, you will get years of use. We've done accelerated testing to three years um, with no degradation of the device. The LEDs themselves are life rated for 100,000 hours. 100,000. Th they don't start. 100,000. They don't de start to degradate for 10,000, which we figure is about 20 years of use. So we like to say that we'll all burn out before the saloon does. <laughs> it will outlive us. <laughs> yeah. Good. I hope that answers your question, Saffron. And, and just going back to that point on rosacea skin, we see a lot of patients with acne form rosacea, mm -hmm. disrupted skin barrier. Are they the right candidates to have this regularly, Patrick? I get asked this a lot. Well, and f uh, first I have to say that Saluma is not regulatory cleared for treating rosacea, nor is other, any other LED device on the market. Um, and that mainly is because there's not good scientific studies on it. Um, having said that, um, we know <laughs> rosacea is kind of a mystery condition. There's a whole it bunch is. of stuff going on there. But we know it's inflammatory based. Correct. And so we know it responds to LED as we saw this morning in, 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 in your treatment room. Mm. Um, and so the, the, an the answer to your science, scientific question is yes. Um, the question to, you know, the answer to your treatment question is, I can't say that about the saloma. But, but we do see those results improve yeah. every single yeah. day. Yeah. Fantastic. And when did you bring saluma into the UK? What year was that? We've been here for four years. Four, since 2018. Yeah. yeah. I first saw your, your product at a demo stand with yeah. um, Paul Cohen. And yeah. I walked past it. And I remember thinking, wow. You know. And I remember thinking, my usual cynical self, Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, that's what was, I thought. First was mm -hmm. wow, and then Paul's actually here. So g good afternoon, Paul. He's virtual, everyone. <laughs> and I'm yeah, he's not here. Paul is there. Hello, Paul. Wave to us if you're there, Paul. He will. And uh, I walked past Paul, and at first I said wow, and then the second one was really. So and Paul introduced me. He's waving to the science, and he showed me the literature. He showed me the clinical, you know, results that they were getting, and uh, and I watched from mm -hmm. afar. Mm -hmm. I watched and I had to take time learning and understanding, you know, why this was going to be different for our patients, why this was going to be different for me, why was it going to be different from other innovations that there were out there. And I think what again stood out was the science and all the points that you talked about. It's shape taking, flexible, close to the skin, the right dose, the right time. Uh, not too much, but just specific. And then, you know, in 2019 at the Aesthetic Awards, your technology won product innovation. Were you there? We were there. Did you see me? We <laughs> did. Yes, Denise. Yeah, product that was innovation. Very exciting. So we won product innovation of the year, which was amazing for us. We've won. At this point, we have over 50 aesthetic awards, but that particular award was really different because we won over every single category. And if you think about all the categories and all the huge companies that are involved in submitting new products. It was, a, it was an astonishing award for us, so I was beside myself with excitement. <laughs> so we had met at that point, that's a, that's, a, that's a pity, but it was a great night for us and a great accomplishment. No, I'd say congratulations. <laughs> Thank
point using his Saluma, which I took back home okay. on his rotator cuff. He's right. a golfer yeah. and uh, it's helped him immensely. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. think he's calling to say thank you. To Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I'll, I'll share one story with you. I was I was watching Denise give a, a lecture, and um, um, a woman in the audience had asked whether or not the Saluma would do anything for frozen shoulder. You know, there's this condition that doesn't allow you to raise your arm up. You know, much be above that. And so um, she had a treatment at lunchtime, and came back, and in the afternoon session. She she had her hand up, mm. and 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 Denise said, "Yeah, do you have a question?" She said, "She said no. I'm showing you that my shoulder works now." <laughs> so, so I I actually avoided rotator cup surgery by using the Saluma. I I I had a nearly fully detached supraspinatus tendon in my rotator cuff, and very common repetitive motion injury for Correct. for for guys over the age of fifty, and. Um, I actually scheduled my surgery. I I said let's let's do this 30 days from now, and between now and then I'm going to use a Saluma twice a day, mm. and um, I canceled the surgery and um, we did a six month MRI f follow up and there's no tear. Mm. No wow. tear. So oh, so so which means that the original injury was in vascularized picture, tissue Denise. because it's be not going to heal. So <laughs> so yeah. So it, it works on rotator cuffs. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, my, you know, my Th Thor and Spartacus send their regards to you both okay. as well. Great. They're enjoying it at home as we speak. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for all of your time for spending with us as well. And please stay behind to actually. conference here in England for the last few days mm -hmm. and uh, you've taken the time to come and join our patients here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So ladies, gentlemen, please stay around and uh, we've got three salumas dotted around. If you just want to ask any questions at all or play around with it, it's so interesting now that you've taken the time to get And there's more champagne in macaroons. And Rukia <laughs> is here with some champagne. <laughs> We're hoping in the next 30 to 60 days. Oh, really? I mean, we're ready to ship it here. We just need the device authorities to say it's okay. And is the price point much the same as the others? Thank yes. you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. This was our first Instagram live. Yeah, it's really interesting. So much great adventure and great. Sorry, I, I hope I didn't go science nerd on you too much. <laughs> I put my mic back on. My husband is taking yeah. on a bit of a tour now. So we're still going to continue yeah. live. I just want to get some feedback from some of our patients as to how they felt. Yeah. Shall I? Okay. Right. So I'm just going to make sure I don't get tangled up at the bottom. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So for those of you out there, if you've got any direct questions, please feel free to fire away. I'm going to just ask the guests what they thought of the event. What did, what did you all think of the event? Oh my goodness, there was so much information there. And that's yeah. 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 Um, and I just realized that I do, um, you know, arthritis, I mean, I'm getting a bit of arthritis. Oh, I'm going to have it straight my thumb one? when I get home. I didn't realize that I'm going to have it. Oh, oh, you have one of the, you have one of the, okay. 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 I'm going to have to go. Okay. I'm going to have to go. You know, I see it's kind of going to be in the background. Very nice. 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 Very
you know, from the aesthetic side, our customer base is primarily women. And so we created the, the Restore because we wanted to increase the, the percentage of our male customers. And the, the, the facialists immediately came and to us and said, oh, as well. so that's for our think female about clients. Inflammation of the Forget eyes the guys. Here. We think about using Zoom for 10 to 12 hours a day. We think about the immune decline of the skin. And so this is a real opportunity to goggle off. And also, we always discuss the mask wear on the sunbed. But they do not. No. No, if you think about lying in the sun, when we lie in the sun, we are actually getting UV injury. So that's the difference. Although it makes us feel great, we all love a bit of sun but we're right, actually right, damaging. Right. UV, uh, UV so rays go through the clouds, they go through our clothes, and they finally go under your skin, and they create damage. This is yeah. not the yeah. UV yeah. spectrum, yeah. 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 this is the yeah. light spectrum. Well, and it's actually and then you've and got stop the, near the infrared, loss cycle. And then you've got the exactly. far infrared. Yeah. So. That's I mean, different you, as well. And it just, for example, it just concretizes all the benefits yeah. of it just, that you kind of get when you've got one at home. You just think, oh, and then it didn't do anything. When you hear the sign, you realize how good it is for the cell and how it is for the cell. Sure. Hi, Carol. Very interesting. Thank you. Healthy aging. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be healthy aging. And I think that's the key point. You know, we're still learning. I've had it here in the clinic for so long, but we're still learning how we can optimize it. Any feedback about the event at all, Lucy? Oh, it's really good. Really interesting. It's lovely to come and see you guys and everyone at the clinic. Okay. And just to learn about something that we've that we've taken from the clinic that you. I, I think I think that gave Google Google the condition name and light therapy and see what comes up. Yeah. Yes. There are so many um, aspects to this that I could use that I would find fascinating. Well, probably. <laughs> Thank you. It was fabulous. Thank you so much. It was lovely to see you. I've missed you too. And honestly, it was so great. But he was good. Patrick was amazing, wasn't he? He just knows so much. He he's just done his homework. He knows every part of it and the science. And he know you know that's what's so reassuring that it's safe and and it's effective and it's amazing. He made the science understandable. Yeah, he did. He did. Really amazing. Thank you so much for asking me to come. It's a pleasure to have you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Patient education should be on the core of everything we do. You know, if we can better demystify the science and the products and how we are all aging in a cellular way, then I think we're all going to better appreciate what we're using and how we're now able to use it. Uh, in a much better way. So look, enjoy. Please grab yourselves a drink and, and don't go. I want to see you again. <laughs> I'm going to keep going around the room, everyone. Wow, we're getting a lot of pa patients show up. I'm just going to wave to all of you. Please wave back if you have any questions or call my team. So there's some questions. Uh, my cousin, Kishani from Malaysia. Wow, the Malaysian contingency are here. Here we go. So this is Denise taking some questions. I have uh, Saluma from America live as well. So everybody, how did you find today's? Really, really good. Yeah, like lots of questions answered and uh, yeah, feel a lot clearer on what the product does. It's really good. Fantastic. Any thoughts about this? Nope, we've got to do. And Denise, what, what do you think about, you know, Saluma and high tech facials and, you know, bringing it to a clinic environment? What can patients expect to see with their results in 6, 12, and 18 weeks' time using this? I think, I, think the, I think the most impressive thing, well, first of all, I'm very impressed with the clinic here and everything that you offer. The high-tech treatments that you offer are outstanding. And for me, the most important thing is your own understanding and education 
of the processes. I have never been more impressed with a doctor in my life. If I, if I could live here and move here, I would be a patient immediately. So with regard to Saluma, the most important thing to understand is that well, it will enhance anything that Dr. Sharina is offering here at the clinic and increase healing, uh, decrease downtime, increase uh, comfort levels for the patient, get you out in public sooner, uh, particularly if you've done a more invasive treatment. Um, and one of the things that didn't come up today but I think is important is that you can also use Saluma pre to prepare the tissue for upcoming uh, treatments. Preparation is key and we always say that prepare the tissues before we trigger it with other treatments as well. Thank you Denise. Thank you. Great. And I'm just going to get a little bit more feedback from um, one of my team actually. Let's just see what Sana has to say. Sana, what have you learned from today? Did you find that interesting? Quite a bit actually. It was, uh, it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the whole presentation was amazing. Um, I think, you know, Patrick, the way he's answered you know, everyone's questions. Definitely everyone's walking out with you know, a lot more knowledge um, about this Luna. So yeah, it was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sana. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say a big thank you to each and every one of you for being a part of our life. We've had so many waves and so many hearts come through, and the energy has been very powerful, not just in clinic, but out there virtually from each and every one of you. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Saluma for being a part of this. I'd like to thank Patrick and Denise for coming to Beaconsfield and to all of you at home. Stay well, stay safe, and stay energized. Over and out. Bye, everyone.